What is up guys? Today we're doing a bit of a follow-up on the Hausa opening video and today I'm gonna show you not one, not two, but three different basic strategies that you can employ with Hausa. So without further ado, let's get started. Now if you haven't seen the standard opening guide, I suggest you watch that video first because uh, it kind of shows everything leading up to getting that 800 food. But if you're an experienced player, you can might as well just start with this video right away. So we've just gathered that 800 resources and that brings us to the HF Alliance options. So the first strategy I'm going to show you is the Songhai. So this option is great if you want to apply a lot of pressure. You maybe want to siege down some buildings. It's especially good uh, versus civs uh, that like to boom, like Brits or Japan. So I'm just going to put everyone here on gold. I'm also going to research the, har the access. And I'm actually going to gather so I have 100 wood and 200 gold. And this is because I want to build the university as quickly as possible. And... We can just and we can just go ahead and trade the wood actually for that last bit, so that's why I'm only getting 100. So I'm not gonna send any shipping down because I wanna send the Palace of Amina shipment. So here we're reaching uh, 200, so now we can go ahead and go over to herds. And we can go ahead and trade in there and start building this uh, university. Meanwhile, we're just herding our herds in. And we don't need a lot of gold. Uh, every raid will cost 40 gold. But the thing is, uh, we, we're gonna get 300 gold on the H up, so we're gonna have just a lot of gold. Now, you can uh, also go ahead and build a house now. I would definitely suggest that. So that's why we need that 100 wood, because we're gonna sell for about 200. That means that we're gonna need 300 in total for these two buildings. Now, uh, once this uh, is completed, I would set it to XP, because we need to get a few shipments in as soon as we age up here. So I'm just gonna queue another veil here, and I'm gonna place the war camp right here, and I'm gonna send Palace of Mina. Now this will give us uh, tokens of 300 influence, uh, which will be uh, very useful here for to actually get our raider dispatch ability in. Um, so I'm just gonna gather the coin up, I'm gonna start training some raiders. Hopefully you should be able to get a full batch pretty easily here. And then we can put a lot of people on food, and also some people on wood now if you wanna follow up with some Fulani. Which I would definitely recommend together with this strategy. So we're just gonna wait for that shipment to come in. And here it's coming. So we're gonna place the palace in range here of this university. And we're gonna gather up this influence. We got the first batch of raiders here, which you can go away, you go to your opponent and actually uh, start raiding him. Now you can build a second batch if you want to, or you can actually go ahead and train some. Uh, Fulan is also a pretty good option in this case. Now we're reaching that point where we can do the Raider Dispatch. So we're gonna go ahead and do the Raider Dispatch now. We can also go ahead and sell and build uh, some other houses. And as you can see now, we're already starting idling the opponent. And we got some reinforcements coming in, which is amazing. And then we also got, of course, the Fulan is coming in here. Which will help if you actually get some pikes out. And remember, these guys are really good at raiding, so uh, you definitely want to go ahead and raid a lot with them. Like, try to siege buildings as soon as uh, you have a decent mass like this. So, as you can see, we already have 15 uh, cavalry units out here on the field and 5 Fulani, so this will uh, really deal very well with civs like Dutch, for instance, which we send the pikes. And at this point, you can go ahead and send more Fulani, and you can send some other units, or you can just go ahead and send maybe some eco cards, it depends what you want to do. But this is just a really good strategy where, uh, where you get like just a really good mobile mass here in your opponent's base. Really early, like 649 is, uh, is definitely really early. And if you can get some houses out now, that means that you will probably house your opponent if they go for an FF, which is just really good. So I would recommend this strategy if you're up against like Brits, uh, Japan, Ottoman, or uh, yeah, maybe Dutch as well would probably be a pretty good choice. So against boomy civs in general, Sweden it's really good against uh, too. So if you're up against a boomy civ and you want to apply some pressure early on, I think this strategy is really good. And also 
uh, it just has uh, actually quite nice eco behind this because you got that university up and you got the palace up. So you're, you're not sacrificing too much. Now, if you want to make this strategy even faster and more uh, dangerous, uh, you can actually skip out on sending, uh, on, uh, you can actually skip out on building this university and then you can go ahead and make just more units, maybe even go double war camp. Uh, right as you age or you can just go ahead and send the five raiders first so there's a lot of options be behind this and you can also go ahead and build the teepees now i would suggest matching the fulani with the raiders because um, most of the units that's going to be dangerous here in the beginning for the raiders are units like pike and masks and they're going to be really easy to kill with the fulani archers so now we know a bit more about when to pick uh, the song eye so good luck using the song high in your next game and let's take a look at the next option. In this case we're gonna age up here but we're gonna age up instead with the native embassy so that's the Berbers. Now the Berbers gonna grant access to Berber nomads and it's also gonna, uh, gonna allow us to build some Berber camels. And we're gonna get that native uh, native building where we can actually build those units, the native embassy that is. So I'm just gonna keep herding in my herd here. I'm gonna gather some wood here because we're not gonna get any wood and we're gonna need to build some buildings. So I wanna her uh, get about maybe 300 wood, something like that. And we have a shipment in now and we're gonna use that to actually send the house a kingdom once it's time. Um, then we can just go ahead and get some more coin because we're gonna wanna actually, actually I can get even more wood actually, uh, because we're gonna wanna put down a house, we're gonna wanna put down a palace, we're gonna need 200, 200 for that, and we're also gonna wanna send of course the House of Kingdom, so when we're reaching the end here, that's when we wanna send this guy, so we can go ahead and send it right now. And just continue herding this in and we can also go ahead and get our access up and we can actually also go and get the placer mines because with this build we're gonna go for the Berber nomads and it's quite a greedy option uh, and, and that means we're really gonna benefit from these uh, upgrades to the gather rates because the Berber nomads have insane bon bonus when gathering from natural resources. So the HRP is coming in now and I'm getting ready here to put down a palace. So we're gonna set it down here, I think. Put it down a bit defensively like that. We can actually help build it with a few builds as well. Then we can get the native building out. We can get the TP out. And finally, we can go ahead and get the university out in range of all of these buildings. We can also start gather up these crates here so we can go ahead and start building some Berber nomads. We're gonna put them on wood actually. And then we're gonna go ahead and we want to go get this snares upgrade. So we can go ahead and trade in, get the snares and also start building uh, our war camp. And we're gonna need a house really soon as well. So we're gonna gather up for that house now. So a bit of low in the action here. So we have the fort quite early here, which is great if we are facing some early pressure. And there we go, there we have the wood. We're actually gonna put a few more on wood because I wanna build some Fulani down the, down the road. There we go. So you see, we already have a great economic lead and now we can go ahead and send spice trade. Now this depends of course, maybe you wanna send Fulani if you're being pressured or maybe raiders if you wanna do some raiding. But I do like the spice trade. The Palaka code is also a great option. If you're doing this type of strat, I would always have the Palaka code in your deck because the Palaka code will give really good gather rate to these Berber Nomads. Like if we take a look at the Berb Berber Nomad gather rate here on the animals, now unfortunately he pathing is horrendous here but why can't he kill that okay so so if you take a look at that I actually have 133 uh, bonus uh, here gathering so with the spice trade it would actually uh, go, come up to even uh, 1.5 and we can go ahead and trade some units we can actually go for the Fulani behind this and make sure to build some houses as well um, and then of course if you get the Palaka code it will be closer to like 1.7 or something like that. So yeah, you will have just insane base gather rate and the, the uh, Fulani are just a great option here when you're defending. Now don't be afraid to sell some cattle here to get the batches out and go ahead and put down even another. So you just want to basically max out these, uh, these Berber nomads. So 
you can get six of them and as you can see you can start building your mass just stay close to the fort you're gonna probably be a bit idle if you go this greedy uh, but but it's all gonna be worth it because you're gonna have this huge lead economically uh, once you're done hopefully now you have to be careful though the berber nomads are easy to kill and it can actually be worth it getting this hit points upgrade so i would definitely think about that and also the selective logging can actually be quite good considering you're gonna have people on wood uh, since you have uh, since you need the wood for housing and also to build the uh, jabs uh, sorry the fulani so I'm just gonna put a few more here on gold so we can get the full batch and then I'm basically just gonna alternate between the the Fulani and the Jazz. Now the next card doesn't really matter, it's really up to you. You can send a 700 wood, it's a good option because then you don't need to chop so much or you can send Palace of Mina if you want some more defense. Uh, or you can go ahead and send the, the Fulani and just keep on training Jabs uh, like this. But also... Uh, I think it's really up to you from this point and uh, once you feel you have a comfortable mass of units you can start pushing out and you can actually even uh, think about adding a second racks pretty soon so because you really have that eco to actually sustain it so so just being housed a bit here and we can see we already have all the berber nomads out and you can see we're just flying our, our food is just flying in so at this point we just want to max out as many units as we possibly can. I'm going to sell once again, get some more houses. And as you can see, we're getting that healthy mass of units here. And you can just keep alternating between the different unit types here. Also, we can go ahead now we, when we have the influence, we can go ahead and send the Berber allies. I think that's just a great combo here uh, with the uh, with, with the Fulani because they would just wreck any cavalry here in in this age. So as you can see, it, it is uh, it isn't as uh, fast as the other uh, strategy where you just get like a ton of units out really quickly. But the difference with this strategy is you have incredible eco behind this and you really have like nice market techs you have a lot of villagers so you can really just get a lot of stuff and just keep pounding your enemy uh, from this point on and i think this strategy really works well against a lot of civs now the only danger is if you do this strategy against a civ that's really good at booming say brits for instance then the problem is you're gonna uh, run out of the amount of uh, berber nomads that you can build but he can just keep on making more manor houses and more villager cards so it might be hard actually to out boom him um but you can definitely get a nice lead here in the beginning which can actually help just jump start and get your army going <sighs> And then as I said, Polacco Code is a great option, and the great option here would be just going 700 coin and just aging up behind this. But yeah, there's just a lot of options, and because you're uh, you're gonna be on wood with a lot of uh, people here, that means that you can actually uh, use that wood to start building up your infrastructure, get university out, get palaces out, and uh, yeah. So that was basically that strategy. It's a bit of a greedy option if you like playing a bit more greedy and a bit more turtly. But now that you got a feel for that strategy, we can go ahead and go to the last strategy. Finally, we're gonna take a look at the uh, last strategy, which is an FF strategy. We're gonna go for the uh, Moroccans there, and we're gonna get the axe upgrades, put everybody on wood like this, just hurting our hurt. And this strategy um, is gonna focus just on speed, getting those shipments out and just getting to H3 as, as soon as possible, utilizing those shadow taking units. So I'm gonna gather 200 wood here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and gather uh, some gold here because I wanna get that palace out, just get some defense going here and we're gonna go ahead and send the uh, uh, Hausa builder pretty soon but we're gonna wait for it to reach that end before we do it of course we get it in h2 so meanwhile there's not a lot of happening here i have the 200 gold i'm just splitting split between food and gold you can actually have a few more on gold than i have right now so that's perfect and then we can go ahead and send the house of kingdom now if we're gonna do this strategy i wouldn't have this many cards in h2 this is just an example so i would definitely reduce the number of cards here because we're not gonna be able to send that many cards uh, once we get up in h but you you're gonna see that and you're gonna have to make up your own mind how you want to do that so actually gonna put even more people on gold because i realize i'm gonna need a bit more gold so we're gonna aim for that 200 200 on the h up 
and just be ready to plop down the, the palace. Now we want it in a defensive location, preferably up here uh, where the gold mine is or here where the food is. So now we're just going to put down the church, I'm going to put down the palace, we're going to get the wagons here, and we're going to put out our TP, and with those crates we're going to get our next shipment hopefully. There we go. So we can go ahead and send the 700 coin. And now for our uh, next shipment, we're gonna wanna send the Akan. And that means that we'll actually need 250 influence. But once you got the 250 influence, you can go ahead and switch this for XP for a while if you want to. It's totally up to you. We're also gonna sell a, a, a cattle, so we now actually have enough of the gold. So I don't really need to go more gold. So I can just focus here on the food while I wait for the seven coin and this is why we build the palace here because if I didn't build the palace I would still just I would just be floating resources now waiting for that 700 gold so you can do other stuff like you can build a war camp that's another type of strategy but I just like putting up the palace because it gives you defense while you're trying to age but now the crates are in so we're gonna try to just uh, gather those up we're gonna go for the account we're gonna also want to do the imported techs uh, the imported cannons tech now you don't have to go for this but if you want to go for the imported cannons tech just make sure that you have enough influence for that I think we're gonna get enough if I put it on XP now otherwise you can just go for other shipments that uh, don't involve that strategy so we almost have the food and once we have all the resources we're gonna sell for gold and age up so now's the time and we're gonna go with the accounts now we can go with the berbers as well it's a good option here to get the four berber camels but uh, in this case i prefer the account and meanwhile we can just get some treasures and now we're just gonna go ahead and sell for wood because we're gonna build a house and we're gonna build a war camp and then we're, our macros basically is gonna be food and gold because we're gonna want to get some accounts out because of the fact that they shadow take so we can really utilize the fact that we uh, that, that we get up to h3 quickly and you can also depending on how you do this strategy you can go for the fast hf but i prefer saving it and going for the cannons or just making more native accounts but it's up to you now i'm, I'm starting to train some accounts now and just want to try to get full batches out as soon as you can there we have the account from the shipment it's gonna be good if you're being pressured and we're just trying to keep our resources here on the low now we need another house so i'm gonna sell another another cow here so just utilize the cows sell them to build houses now this strategy doesn't really have a lot of eco behind it because you're selling a lot uh, but instead you're gaining that momentum and actually getting a lot of units so on the HF we're gonna get six accounts as well so we're gonna have quite the account mass and then we can go ahead and get some cannons or go ahead and get Lefidis so I think with this strategy it's really crucial to have the Lefidis in the deck and also the a thousand influence because that's gonna help you get those cannons out so meanwhile we're just training these and we're almost up now Just trying to get as big batches as possible. Then we can always go ahead and sell some cattle whenever we need as well. And there we go. The h up is in. So let's send a thousand influence. Do the imported cannons tech. And at this point I think we can actually switch it back to influence. To get our third uh, falconet later on. We can also go ahead and build a house. Because those cannons are going to take a lot of pop. And they can easily catch you off guard. And as you can see we have 20 accounts already out on the field and we're gonna get probably five more here So I'm gonna go ahead and sell there so we can actually complete the batch and Now that we got the implants in in just a sec here We're just gonna be ready to gather that up as fast as possible so we can go ahead and train the cannon We can also go ahead and send the five graffiti or if you want you can send the five griots and five villagers It's also a good option here So we're just gonna gather that so we can start training the falconet and as you can see this uh, falconet push is going to be slower than uh, a lot of FF sieves uh, be because of the fact that the uh, house needs to get the important cannon stack and everything but the pro of this strategy is that the account is way better units compared to other mask type units uh, they just have insane stats because of the fact that they have that area of effect so they're just so good in mass 
And here we go. Now we just make sure that we don't get popped. So I'm just gonna build a few more houses. We got the uh, horses out. And we're just gonna focus on getting this. And also getting, of course, as many accounts as we can. And there is our timing, basically. So this is an al al alternative to, uh, to to go for you if you have done the standard build order and you want to do some uh, FF timing. And I do think that this strategy can be really, uh, really powerful, especially against teams that like to go a bit greedy in the beginning, because you can really hit them with artillery uh, and these really strong musketeers when they only have H2 units. Uh, and these musketeers do especially well uh, against, uh, against some archer type units, because, well, they have that high damage output with the area of effect, so the, the, the pikes and archers tend to like clump together and you can just get massive multi-kills. So yeah, very different types of strategies. We had the first strategy, of course, with a lot of H2 aggression, just trying to raid your opponent. Then we had the more eco-focused strategy with the Berber Nomads and Spice Trade and Polaco Code, which gave you like insane eco, really good for the Fulani Jab comp. And then finally this uh, FF strategy where you have a lot of shadow taking units and just get a lot of accounts plus Falconets and yes, double down on that area of effect damage. So I hope you find this video useful and that you can try to employ these strategies yourself, maybe do some own variant of them. And remember, this is a really basic setup to get you going. It's not meant to be an end all guide and there's different things you can do within these strategies, but it's just to show you the versatility of Hausa and how many, and, uh, and how the H up to H2 really matters uh, when, you're, uh, when you're doing the different strategies, like when you're trying to find your playstyle.